A couple of weeks ago, I reviewed the Pagani Design PD1661, a Rolex hull homage that offers excellent value for money for its sub £100 price tag. I didn't buy the watch, I borrowed it for the purpose of the review, but it did get me thinking about homage watches more broadly. The homage watch debate is one of the biggest online battles fought by watch enthusiasts. Are homages ethical? Are homages rebadged fakes? or affordable clones of luxury watches. If you're new here, my name is Louis and I'm a classic menswear enthusiast and watch nerd. If you do enjoy this video, please like and subscribe. I would really appreciate it. I recently hit 450 subscribers and I'm really grateful to each and every one of you. Thank you. The definition of the word homage or homage means to honor or to pay respect. But when it comes to watches, it is more commonly used to refer to watches that are essentially just copies of famous watches or watches that are heavily inspired by famous watches. The cynical view is that brands borrow designs to cash in on famous luxury watches to make a quick buck. But is that a fair assessment? In some cases, maybe. But in others, you can clearly see there is a real passion behind the product and the quality of affordable watches is getting better and better. It's hard to produce a watch design that is unique, yet still beautiful and has widespread appeal. It's also very hard to start a business of any kind from scratch. For every micro brand that has been a big success, there are many that have barely made a splash. Why do some micro brands produce the same rehashed dive watch designs and not, for example, delicate little dress watches because they sell in an ideal world watchmakers could focus solely on passion projects but in the real world that just isn't plausible as for larger watchmakers they can't just focus on dedicated enthusiasts if they want to make a profit they need to appeal to the wider market people who aren't necessarily into watches as much as we are it isn't something unique to watchmaking it's the same story in the book industry and the movie industry. The profits generated from bestsellers and blockbusters give companies money to invest in smaller projects and successful formulas are repeated over and over with remakes and sequels and copycats all being very common. Years ago I was a massive movie buff and collected limited editions and it was extremely frustrating to see the same movies get the special treatment over and over again whilst my favourite movies were ignored. But looking back, I can see that it is a necessary part of running a profitable business to embrace the popularity of certain products and certain designs. It's true of even the biggest watch brands. They rarely take risks or take chances. Rolex is by far the most successful luxury watch brand but even Rolex will only tinker and tweak their designs from time to time. They know what sells and everybody knows Rolex because of this. Marketing is a massive part of the watch industry and it's very difficult for brands to break through to the upper echelon and demand top dollar for their watches. And so it's easier for brands to jump on trends or hijack the popularity of other brands to stay in business. So with all that being said, I don't think there is a problem with homage watches. Do I think they hurt the watch industry? No. I think fakes do because fakes negate the need to buy the real thing. If you can afford the real deal, but you wear a fake, that's a bit dodgy. An homage exists to satisfy those who will never be able to afford the real thing or to meet the demand for watches that are incredibly rare or no longer exist. Rolex isn't losing out on a sale because working class folk are buying Invictus or Mariner clones off eBay or Amazon for 100 quid a pop or buying a clone of a long extinct reference from decades ago. In truth, anything that exists to stop people buying fakes and consciously or unconsciously supporting the other seedy and illegal practices that often go hand in hand with counterfeiting has to be a good thing. There is also a bit of a double standard within the watch collecting space. The AliExpress brands are often derided for producing homages, but Tudor doesn't seem to catch the same level of flack 
even though a lot of its designs are derivative. It just highlights the fact that it's all subjective, it's just opinion. I try to avoid one-to-one -one clones because it will always be in the back of my mind that it isn't the real thing. And there are enough watches out there that are close to that grail you want, but different enough to have their own charm and redeeming qualities. I would rather just buy something else altogether. It's like those car nuts who put body kits and Ferrari badges on old Toyota MR2s. It's still a Toyota and not a Ferrari. And that's not a slight on the Toyota MR2, which is an iconic car in its own right. It's also entirely possible to own an homage without realising that it's an homage. There are only so many design elements that make up a watch. And so even if you were to design and manufacture a watch completely from scratch, there is a chance that it looks like a watch that's already for sale or was for sale in the past. I don't think it matters how experienced you are. This is always a possibility. I think the important thing to focus on is the basics of watch collecting. Do you like it? Does it suit your style and personality? Do you have the financial means? If a watch ticks all the boxes, buy it, enjoy it, and forget about everything else really. Let me know in the comments what you think. That's all I've got time for today. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you again soon.